We are drawing the S35 servo and I'm going to start by changing the units to metric. Tools, document settings, units, and millimeters. Then I'm going to draw the front view by drawing two rectangles and then constraining them. I have to constrain them to each other first before I can dimension them since they're based on each other. First I'm going to vertically align the middle rectangle to the outside rectangle so they're symmetrical. Then I can dimension the bottom of the one rectangle to the bottom of the other and make it 26.4. I'll then dimension the height of the entire rectangle to 35.6. Then I'll constrain the midpoint of the re bottom rectangle to the origin using the coincident constraint. Now I can dimension how wide my servo is. And it's 39.5. We can dimension how wide the outside rectangle is, 54.3, and the thickness of the tabs is not stated in the graphic, but it is 2.5 millimeters. Now that we have the basic shape, we can extrude it. 20 millimeters. Even though the circles that are cut to hold for the screw holes are mounted on these surfaces here, I'm actually going to draw them on the top surface here and extrude cut through all because it'll be easier to dimension off of all of it. So I'll put a sketch on this top surface. And then I'll place the four circles and then constrain them. These circles are all 4.8 in diameter, so I can go ahead and dimension those. By dimensioning one and making the rest equal. I can also make them horizontally constrained and vertically constrained to each other. Vertical constraint from center to center and center to center. Horizontal constraint from center to center and center to center horizontally. Now I can see that as I move them, they adjust accordingly. If I dimension them, they're 10 millimeters apart. And I can assume since the block is 20, they're also 5 millimeters from the outside edge. I can also see that the circles are 47.3 apart horizontally. 
So I'll dimension both circles by clicking on them and dragging up. 47.3. There are two ways to constrain them horizontally. Sideways, we can see they're not quite even. We could constrain the midpoint of the center line down here, vertically to here, or dimension the distance all the way across, subtracting it from that dimension and dividing by two. We'll go with the vertical midpoint constraint. So vertical, midpoint, to circle center. Notice they change color so you know they're fully constrained. Now that the circles are locked in place, I can go ahead and draw the main servo mount circle on it as well. Somewhere around here in the not quite in the middle. Now I'll draw two circles. And from we can see from the center of one circle, the center of the outside mounting circles to the center of the servo motor center circle is 13.5. We're unable to dimension the other direction. because that would give us a over-constrained dimension. We can also make it horizontally lined up across the middle by aligning the midpoint of the side line to the center of the circle. The inside circle is not initially dimensioned on the drawing itself, but it's 5.5 millimeters. The outside lip of the servo hub is 13.5, which was missed in the drawing as well. Now I'm going to make the lines that create the notches to cut out a part of the servo. And I'll do that using the rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw them so they're not quite touching the center point of the circle. I'm only going to do one and I'll show you how to copy it. No, that's not a good idea. So go ahead and do all four. And trim them out. And align them up on the midpoint of the, this line here on the side of the rectangle to the center of the circle using the coincident constraint not the horizontal constraint so coincident center of the circle to the midpoint of the line center circle midpoint line center circle midpoint center circle midpoint now all we need to do is dimension the width of one gap at 3.6 and set the other servos, set the other rectangles equal to that gap. Equal line one to line two. Click the other line, make a match. We don't need to have this outside line dimension because it's unnecessary for what we're trying to accomplish. Now we should be able to extrude cut all those regions as long as this rectangle on all of them is outside the boundary of the servo. Extrude, cut. We're going to say all. And you should be able to click the circle and the rectangle in all four spots. Now I can see what it's going to do. It's going to cut from the that top plane 
through that middle tab and say OK. Now I can go back and use that sketch 2 by sharing it to complete the top portion. We can extrude the height of the small circle by using an equation. So we see the height from the tab to the top is going to be 17.76. We can also see the height of the base of our servo is 26.4. So if we add 26.4 to 17.76, we can then subtract that from the original servo height of 35.6. So once again, that was 26.4 plus 17.76 minus 35.6. The height of the outside lip is 2 millimeters. Once we do that, we're going to put a chamfer on this outside edge so that it's angled downward as in the picture. And we can use a one millimeter chamfer. We can choose distance, distance and angle, or two distances. Since it's a 45 degrees, we can just do a one millimeter and one distance. Just by clicking on the edge, and it'll angle it off. and your servo is complete. If you'd like, you can also f do things like small fill at the corners to one millimeter or less. You put a chamfer on the outside edges here so it looks a little more realistic, but it's unnecessary. It's almost tedious selecting it. Once they're all selected, you can hit apply. And see how it kind of slightly rounds them off. If you'd like to, you can round other surfaces or apply a rib on the servo here, but it is unnecessary. When your servo is complete, you can turn off the sketches you no longer need and remember to save it.